and welcome to a hopefully not cursed edition of the Oddity Archive. And I say hopefully not cursed because today marks our 13th trip into the VHS vault. And uh, I'm trying to hold out hope that it's more a lucky and lucrative trip, but uh, yeah, it could just be another unintentional acid trip. But anyway, we're right on the edge of springtime here, so the time is right to do a little movin' and wheelin' and dealin', and, uh, and those are three things I genuinely stink at. But conveniently, I just so happen to have two tapes in my possession designed to help me clear out the clutter, and in the end clear out the biggest piece of clutter of all time, Archive HQ. So, taking things in logical order, today's first tape revolves around holding a better garage sale. And ironically, I think my copy had been through a garage sale or two or three by the time I got my hands on it. Still sealed, I might add. And funnily enough, the back of this tape actually suggests that when you're done with it, you sell it at your own garage sale. So, I guess they had a lot of faith in their products. Maybe... But uh, anyway, the tape in question is How to Have a Money-Making Garage Sale, starring Phyllis Diller from 1987. And I promise all the stickers and markings and stuff on here are not a cute design. These are all 100% real. I think all the previous owners had as much faith as the makers did in this thing. But when I first picked up this tape... I saw a bit of a hole in the very concept of this. Wouldn't Phyllis Diller have been much more qualified to dispense advice on buying at garage sales as opposed to holding them? Wait, did I accidentally put in Dorf on Golf? Sorry folks, garage sale's off. Got a bad case of Phyllis Diller here. Hey, wait a minute, I know this area. This was shot in Boulder. Oh man, Phyllis Diller is way too conservative for this area. Oh, hello, hello, all you beautiful people. What a great day for a garage sale. Oh, hi there. Yeah, blow it out your ass, lady. Now where's the good stuff? Double prices, and look at all these customers! I haven't had this many people in my garage since the Vice Squad raided Fang's going out of marriage party. <laughs> I've been I did not add that. Sales and yard sales for years. So I've put together some of my secrets, along with tips from people around the country who clean up at garage sales. Or clean up after garage sales. Right. Now that means having fun while you make the money. And who knows more about turning trash into cash than me? I've been doing it for years! <laughs> I'm just gonna assume these shoppers are all deaf and incredibly unobservant. Two weeks ago, I decided to have another one. When I dared to go where no man had gone before. Your bedroom? Okay, I'm only playing by her rules. Oh, that's about a six on the Richter scale. Oh, I'll never forget it. Christmas of 63. That was a rough one. Poor Rudolph never saw that landmine. The neighbors have the remains of Donner and Blitzen. Here. Oh, a love letter from Tom Selleck. Ooh. In my handwriting. Ha, <laughs> ha, Who cares? My thoughts exactly. Well, a house needs a good clean and the closets are bulging, and the attic sagging, and the basement is rising. And the carpet needs a haircut to turn old into gold. Now, it's time to get organized. Does that strike fear into your heart? It shouldn't. All you need is a calendar, a Sunday paper, one of these, and a pen. And a fifth of Jack Daniels. Pick a date. Like, ow. 
Actually, when I pick my weekend, I check the paper for any major sporting or television events. Or if my neighbor Marge is getting married again. Or if I'm getting married again. I'm starting to wish I had put in Dorf on golf. Two weeks lead time. Takes me that long to put on my makeup. <laughs> Do you know what'll sell? Everything. Except for this tape. Everywhere. Oh, look at here. Tea set. I'll polish this up. It'll go like that. I think the ashes of Phyllis's past faces are in there. Goodness. <laughs> the outfit that I wore to my last facelift. Would you believe it? I believe this tape would be about two minutes long without your constant asides. Who do you think you are? Me? I'll sell it. It'll go. When in doubt, put it out. <laughs> That's what I say when making every episode of this show. I'm empty. Aha! What a great time to do a real thorough cleaning job. Okay? <laughs> How dare you not use latex gloves? The supplies you'll need for a money-making garage sale are already in your house. Marking pens, scissors, scotch tape, masking tape. But, like these little price tags, you'll need to make a few inexpensive purchases and- Don't forget the tranquilizer gun to use on those especially aggressive shoppers. White for Marge's stuff and blue for mine. They match my eyes and my legs. And my mood. Now that I have everything collected, all I've got to do is get it out of here and into here. <laughs> God, I'm good. So good, it's not even the same stuff. It's also Fang's room. Wait till he finds out there are other rooms in the house. <laughs> it's a fine line between Phyllis Diller and Joan Rivers. I think I'll stay on Joan's side of the fence. Merchandise properly displayed is half sold. I like to start with men's clothing and then work my way up to their wallets. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be anything else. Remember books? They were real big before Dallas and Dynasty. I'll give it another 30 years. They'll come back. Dallas and Dynasty, that is. Display. A good pricing guideline is 25 cents for paperbacks and a dollar for hardbacks. Five dollars for razorbacks. Reference books, the good stuff, should be priced slightly higher and definitely placed away from the latest Jackie Collins kiss and kill novel. And especially far away from anything by Herman Hess. That's like oily rags and a blowtorch. Oh dear. Oh, <laughs> the joys of sex. Kind of like my books on ham radio. Records. A good idea is 50 cents, 75 cents. But oh, how I hate to part with this one at any price. Pavarotti salutes Madonna. Well, I'll take that one. God knows it would make a better archivism than this. Plenious items that defy description, like my hot banana soup. Please tell me that's not a euphemism. But you can. Otherwise, try grouping according to price. Like 25 cents, 50 cents. Wait a minute. Oh my God, it's a picture of a satanic Q-tip. Ridiculous. That's one of my original faces. <laughs> Let the ah. fail begin! Is anyone else having a really bad case of deja vu right now? Oh, oh hi there. Ah, blow it out your ass, lady. Now where's the good stuff? I'll go a long way. And a little patience helps, too. I'll show you what I mean. Dollar for this lady? How about a buck for this? Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a buck for this. How about it? Will you take a dollar? Sure, as long as you don't expect anything in return. The dollar guy may show up at your sale, too. And you know what? He's really your friend. I've still got the big stuff, and he's parted with a lot of dollars. Well, it's easy when your saliva glands produce dollar bills. Have no fear, neighbor Marge is here. Oh, lucky me! Oh, sorry, Phyllis. Little Tommy was on the party, and the sitter was late, and oh, when I tried to leave, there, were, there was such a horrible tantrum. She's got to find a sitter who doesn't throw tantrums. <laughs> and my breakdown begins. This toast toast? Yes, yes, this toast toast. But how can I tell? It's not plugged in. Ha! But wait. Plug it in and find out for yourself. You see, it's always a good idea to have a heavy-duty extension cord. Hey, lady, you got it a fork I can stick in here? Table. One of the Looking irons is bent. Hi, can I help you? Doesn't work, does it? Well, actually, the proper term would be function. A hundred bucks for this? The case is all scratched? Look at the color. She's got pink hair. It's supposed to be pink. She's a rock singer. I don't know. 
I was really looking for something bigger. And about 2% of the price. Oh, with my furniture. What if I get home and this doesn't work? <laughs> it works now. That's the best I can do. Yeah, I know. Just like all the other garage sales, once it leaves here, you don't care, huh? Well, actually, this customer is not nitpicking. I believe you will find he is more entitled than anything else. By putting an item out for sale, you've made it very clear that you don't want it anymore. So bargain. But always let the buyer name a lower figure first. And if that doesn't work, remove your shoes, bang them on the table, and scream incoherently. Hundred, huh? Okay, I'll take it. You're a good boy. Nice and stupid. Oh boy, is this day gone fast! Only 30 minutes left to go, and only a few items left to sale. I guess you know what that means. Hopefully not a striptease sale. Jim K. Diller shoppers, attention! The sale will be closing in 30 minutes. All items are now one half off the marked price. Light up, folks. It's the Blacklight Special. Ah, oh, wow. Three dollars? Terrific. Oh, hey, it's the director of Garden Shear Massacre 2. I love that movie. Garage Thank set. you. <laughs> Thank yous mean a lot. Don't ever forget that. Well, that was the quickest half hour in history. Okay, hey, hold off on taps. The tape's not dead yet. Thanks for coming by. I know your garage sale will be as successful as mine. You only sold six items, Phyllis. And presentation, and of course your gorgeous good looks. You too can have a money-making garage sale. Goodbye and happy sale. Where's Fang? You suppose I sold him? Hey, Fang, where are you? Are you here? Is that you? Nope. Fang's off having a three-way with Vera and Maris right now. This music is giving me flashbacks to that Wally Bogue tape. Let's just yeah, end it here. Good. You know, just in case Phyllis were to come back out in her pink underwear and without her wig and getting chased around by a guy in a gorilla suit. I wouldn't put it past this tape. And into the garage sale pile you go. Today's other tape deals with the heavy stuff. Read the real estate end of things. So, our other tape comes to us from the Real Estate Division of Better Homes and Gardens. It's from 1989, and it's called Merchandising Your Home. And, of course, this is all about preparing your place for showings and ultimately selling. But what I really want to get out of this tape is some info on how to take some especially stilted, awkward, staged photographs. Uh, but seriously... Who the hell would ever want to move to beautiful downtown Awara? I'm going to be stuck here for the rest of my life, aren't I? Better Homes and Gardens to the Arth Power? Oh, great. I suck at algebra. What the hell do t-shirts, coffee mugs, and bobblehead dolls have to do with selling my place? Never mind. Welcome to the Better Homes and Gardens presentation of Merchandising Your Home. Brought to you by the We Buy Ugly Houses people. For preparing your home to sell. Your guides for the video are David Richards and Liz Turner. Hello, I'm David Richards. I'm up north in a two-story home with a basement. It's the middle of winter. And I'm Liz Turner, where it's a lot warmer. You hear that, David? Nah, 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 nah. Catch garage. This tape combines Better Homes and Gardens editor's knowledge of the home with Better Homes and Gardens real estate agent's knowledge of marketing homes. Granted, that knowledge was built around dancing on a street corner while holding a comically huge sign, but still. You're probably watching this tape because you not only take great pride in your home. Uh, sure. Well, because you're interested in knowing the steps you can personally take to get your home ready to appeal to the most buyers. You can only polish a turd so much, lady. Better homes and gardens agents from around the country which areas of the home they recommended their sellers give the most attention. Areas like the crawl space. You'll play a very important role in the upcoming sale of your home because you have the opportunity to have a big influence on the way it's presented to buyers. Well, I'm doomed. Selling and buying a home is the biggest financial transaction in most of our lives. Frankly, it's worth some special effort before your home goes on the market. 
Though for you, Benny boy, it wouldn't hurt to sharpen your black magic skills. So, we fill this video with ideas. Many of them are very simple. Some involve more effort. It's up to you and your agent to decide which ones can pay off most for you. Oh, screw the agent. I'm a for sale by owner guy all the way. The merchandising of your home. The things you as a seller may overlook because you've become used to seeing them, but that buyers will look for. I promise I don't have an ultra deep Jack Benny styled vault in the basement. I think I've said too much. Before we start, remember one thing. You're experienced at this business of home buying. After all, you bought the home you're selling. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the ticket. From the buyer's place. Try to visualize your home not as you see it, but from the critical vantage point of a cautious buyer. And with that, let's get started merchandising your home. I don't do the merchandising. I am strictly a licensed man. Thank you very much. What you will get for your home and how quickly it will sell is determined well before this sign ever goes up in the front yard. Housing Illuminati confirmed. It was really merchandising. How to merchandise your home to everyone. And that includes other real estate agents who may be bringing prospective buyers to your home. That first impression on the other agents is as important as the first impression on the buyer. So it helps if the place looks like Laurel Canyon circa 1968? That's why it's important. Duly noted. Let's start with the number one rule. Create space. Unclutter. Uh -oh. You want to make your home inside and out appear as spacious and uncluttered as possible. Now you may have to ask a friend to help you on this, but sometimes you get so used to seeing that neat stack of magazines on the table that you don't realize that it looks like clutter to someone else. I'll have you know that's a first edition copy of Hollywood Babylon you're calling clutter, bub. Sensitive about the advice that you get. Rule number two, everything must be clean. Now it doesn't matter that the prospective buyer's home may not be clean. <laughs> Kinda like your editing. Spotless. Since you're going to be moving anyway, everything you can throw out, sell, or store will make moving easier and cheaper and make your home look better. So don't wait. Now's the time for a garage sale. And to make your place resemble a cracker barrel. There is still some overflow. You may want to consider renting a mini storage space for a few weeks. Or in my case, a few years. Okay, general rule number three, neutralize your home. This applies to colors, wallpaper, furniture, and fixtures inside and out. So it helps if it looks like a one-bedroom Barbie apartment? Furniture and taste will look like in your home. Colors are particularly critical. The farther you get from neutral, the harder... Who knew the Kool-Aid man had such pretentious taste? Of course, money is an important factor here. You don't have to spend a lot. Use your own good judgment when it comes to deciding how much changing is in order. This room may be perfect for just the right person, but a little paint and some judicious arranging help showcase this room. Especially if Nurse Ratchet is your prospective buyer. Sometimes you have to take a good look at your traffic flow. Before this room was rearranged, most of the furniture was crowded into this one area. And still is. The tendency is to use the fireplace as a focal point. And the problem in this case was that this over-concentration of furniture created a real roadblock. It made it a real pain to get a refreshing face full of burning embers. Little shuffling solved these problems. Now you have a straight shot between doorways. Burglars will really appreciate that. It you to enjoy the warm and cozy ambience of the fireplace. General rule number four, give yourself a timetable to get things done. Depending on your goals, determine how much time you have to spend merchandising your home then work on the priority items first. Like kicking out that squatter in the living room. One more time, this proven fact of life. Potential buyers are simply not able to see past clutter, dirt, and strongly personalized decorating. Man, you're just hell-bent on me getting rid of my Leisure Suit Larry coffee table cheat book, aren't you? The very first impression your home makes is the most important it will ever make when it comes to selling your home. But you only get one chance. Fancy, don't let me down now. Drive up the street looking for what they hope will be their dream house. That impression is lasting and can say, the owners didn't take care of their house and don't care. Or it can say, was the white picket fence really necessary? And cared for it. The best way to illustrate this point is to show you a few before and after examples using this house as the subject. Let's start by just looking at the front yard and approach to the house. While the house may look lived in, it doesn't look inviting. That's the point. It's called the beautiful downtown Awara security system. Look, the grass needs to be cut. 
every week when showing the house. Even if it's February. Well, the fertilizer 30 days ago would have made a big difference. Monday morning quarterback. And easy things like edging the sidewalks adds crispness to the line. Christmas? What, am I selling my house to jolly old St. Nick? Edging around flower beds. If you have a plain yard, just a few well-placed shrubs or potted plants can make a big difference. It makes it look like your yard has a nasty fungus. Unclutter. Remove things like... Come on, you're joining the lawn chair protection program. Garden hoses, tools, and lawn mowers are not only unsightly, but can be dangerous, too. But that's the most effective part of the beautiful downtown Aurora security system. Exterior. The eaves get covered with cobwebs and nests. Give the outside a good hosing. It can do wonders. And while you're at it, wash down the sidewalk. Oh, the shame. Your dog may be the friendliest in the city, maybe too friendly. But people who are intimidated by dogs are going to be intimidated by yours. Uh-huh. When he goes for your throat, that's just his way of playing. Alternate location for Fido on the days your home is going to be shown. By doing a few simple things, the overall first impression of your home can go from looking like this to this. Overcast? The same principles apply in every season, especially in the winter. You can say that again. Up north in the winter, your buyers can't tell much about the yard. All they can do is judge based on what they see. A well-shoveled walk and driveway says you take care of your property. To me, it just says, no sledding down my driveway. I hate that. For snow shoveling in your absence. And that also applies to cutting grass if you're going to be out of town. Before we leave the yard, we should take the time to go over the entire exterior. Check the condition of your siding. Replace bad boards, if any. The side of that house needs to see a dentist. And yes, definitely paint the exterior if it needs it. Replacing that old peeling paint job with a new one can make a major difference in the desirability of your home. Now, if I could just figure out how to move the house to a different location. Repair broken screens, tighten shutters. Remove and throw out shutters. Singles on the roof. And check flashings around chimneys. I assure you, no flashing occurs up there. Nobody gets to see the show for free. Keep them readily available when your home is shown. This really helps the buyer. Now let's take a closer look at the front entryway from the outside. The first thing is, make sure your home has an easy-to-read street address. Sometimes the numbers get painted over, or one gets lost or loose. Or around here, deliberately scrambled. You'd be amazed at the number of people who can't find their house anymore after that happens. And if it's old and rusty, replace it. Clean out all the bugs and the light fixtures, or replace them. If you know what? Just tear down the damn house and start over. If you are going to repaint anything on the outside... Paint it black. And to really mess with people, remove the doorknob and paint a realistic-looking one on. Like a new doormat. Or potted plants had a nice touch. In fact, flowers can be one of the easiest and least expensive ways to make your home more attractive. And to cause sneezing fits. Installing a deadbolt lock not only adds obvious security, but has strong buyer appeal at low cost. I know for me personally, the lack of a $20 lock is a total deal breaker on a six-figure house. Brighter ones. Things just look better, especially outside at night and dusk. Now the curb view says... Cheap early 60s tract housing. We hope this video will help you get the most out of your home. For more information on merchandising your home, talk to your local Better Homes and Gardens real estate agent or call the Better Homes and Gardens real estate service toll free at 1-800-274-7654. Or 1-800-ASH-PULLY. Repairing your existing home or making your new home even more desirable, try these other Better Homes and Gardens videos. The joys of grout, linoleum and you, your friend the sump pump, insulation, fiberglass or foam, and make my wall drywall. If you can't find them in your local video or department store, use the enclosed order form or call us at 1-800-678-2665. Or 1-800-OPTANG. The Meredith Corporation would like to remind you that you're gonna eat lightning and crap thunder. You know, the more I think about it, the more moving just seems like a royal, unnecessary pain in the ass. You know, maybe this just is my place in this world. Maybe this is it. You know, Aurora is my life. I've been here almost my entire life. Maybe it just is what it is. That's it for today's archive. Join me next time when...
I don't have a dog or any pets. That's it for today's archive. Join me next time when I call a realtor. I moved to dissolve the corporation in a pool of margaritas, cranking up the afterglow, cause we're going out of business, everything Oh, that's the blanket my little Tommy used to throw up on.